Hello everyone, I'm uh, James, and I've been uh, doing a lot of uh, drawing lately, and I thought it might be a fun idea to just kind of re record it and see see what, see what you guys think, and kind of like give you guys some uh, commentary on kind of my process right now. I'm still a, a beginner, I'm, I'm still learning, but I thought thought this would be fun. And recently, I've been doing these uh, Pokemon drawings, j just using like very quick sketching techniques. Um, because I've been trying to practice uh, just simplifying what I'm drawing as well as shading. And I figured this was a, a a good way to do so. And if you guys are interested, you can just you know give this video a little watch and you know and follow along. So, I'm record recording this on my phone. It doesn't have the best audio. And because I usually use images online for this, um, and I can't because I'm using my phone, I have this old Hiji card right here that I'm going to use for this. Now, the inter interesting thing with this is that it actually has movement. And I haven't actually drawn a lot of movement like this before. So, I thought this might be a fun little experiment. Um... The only other pitchy card I had was, like, the very basic one where you're just kind of standing there in the field from, like, the basic set, like, 25 years ago. God, that's awful. Anyways, so I thought this, this would be fun. Um, so, yeah, let's begin. And excuse the odd crack of my uh, table. Okay. So, to start, I'm just going to use a 2H H pencil. Um, I also have been recently setting a timer. For how long I do these these uh drawings for, just as like my own personal challenge, and this time I do have the timer set up. I gave myself like thirty five minutes to to also talk and, and stuff like that, but we'll we'll see how this turns out. The timer is in no way like if I run out of time, I'm just screwed and have to stop drawing. It's just kind of a you know a rough guideline to see how long it takes for me to actually draw these. So, anyways, yeah. So let's start with the pigeon here. So first, I tend to start with kind of the head and body. So Pidgey, so this Pidgey, he kind of has like a rounder head like this, and it kind of like, like like connects to his body. We can't actually see see much of his body, but we can kind of probably guess it's in this kind of like bean shape right now, based on sort of his pose. So you can kind of tell like. Kind of like a little bean. Okay. Then. I. Add. I'll add his tail. Now I'm not trying to get it perfect. You know. Just trying to get the information on the page. And. The reason why I'm using a 2 h pencil. Is because it's very light. And doesn't really. Uh, take up like. It's not as, like, thick and uh, hard to, um, uh, how can I explain? My brain does not let me get words. But basically, it's, it's a lot lighter and doesn't, like, smudge as often. The downside to the H pencils is that it can scratch your paper, so you have to draw light. But I've been actually trying to do that anyways. Um... So, it's not that big of a deal. Like I'm, I'm putting very little pressure. But let's add his crown. And once again, we're not trying to get a lot of detail right now. We're just trying to get the basic rough shape onto the page. I can add details later with uh, less... Uh, with like one of my uh, B pens. Usually either a B or uh, a B2. Okay, so now... I'm going to add the quick shape for his beak. See, so kind of... Kind of like this. Kind of like a coconut. And I'll add a little bit of... Shape like that. And kind of that. Now, last swing, so because this has movement, normally I just add, like, the one shape. But because we have a bit more movement in this, um, 
I'm actually going to try to inc include the movement into the drawing. Now, it might be kind of hard to see. I'm going to move the camera up just a little bit. So, next, let's add the wing. So, the wing would kind of go up, like, kind of behind the body here and kind of peek and sort of go across like so. And once again, try not to get too much detail, just the rough shape. So it kind of comes down like this. There we go. And he also is flapping, so we'll add the the left wing here. Oh, would this be his right? This would probably be his right wing, actually. Okay, now we'll add the other wing. So, we'll bring this down like so. And, like, it may not look great, but that's sort of the thing with, like, simplifying stuff. Just using very basic, simple, not very complicated shapes, and not a lot of detail at first. But you'd be surprised on how quickly it actually takes shape once you start Focusing on details. Okay. Now I have also noticed that I, the um, his butt here is a little too big, but we can always make make adjustments later. So let's um let, let's make the, those adjustments now. We can just kind of bring his big old booty in a little bit. Sort of like so. Bring his tail feathers down. And we can add his foot. Now, I'm just going to use sticks for this right now. And then I'll add a bit more weight to them after. And we can't quite see his foot on this side fully, but he has a little talon here. And a talon here, and they're going to kind of overlap a little bit. And you can kind of make out his back talon here. It's a little hard with the wind. And you know what, let's even add, add the wind to this. Do something like that. Now it's going to swoop around like this. Like so. Now let me follow that back. So, switch around. Yeah, something like that. And like, and like I said, like, but like you add more detail later. I'll then add his little his little like mask. Little eye. And yeah, so that's that's basically our basic very qu quick shape. So this is the drawing here. And, and this is what it looks like in very basic form. Not too bad. Now let's take the needable eraser. And just get rid of some of these lines that I'm not going to be using. They're just going to cause problems. Now, the best way I've learned to kind of manipulate your kneadable eraser is to kind of pull it. And just kind of like, like loop it. Fortunately, this one's new. So it's still very malleable. So I don't, I don't need to do that as often. But yeah, so take it, mold it into, into a nice shape, and just kind of lightly dab your image. I'm going to pick up the, the phone. And just kind of lightly dab to remove what you, you you no longer need. Now the great thing with the kneadable eraser is that it's not very damaging to your paper. So if you end up, um, like if you have a habit of using like a regular eraser and like ripping your paper, the uh, kneadable e eraser is a good solution because it's not going to damage your paper. The downside is, is that it doesn't fully remove a lot of your graphite. 
So it's kind of a trade-off. It's not as strong as regular erasers, but it's not going to damage your paper as well. Okay, so with that, I think I'm pretty much done with the 2H pencil. We can put that down. And let's see. Let's, let's switch to a B. B is a good idea. Let me see. Find it here. My pencils. So, B pencils, I think they stand for bold. I've heard uh, different uh, phrases. I've heard uh, B stand for bold, um, black, and brittle. So, whichever one you want to uh, relate to. But, basically what it means is the black pencil or the bold pe the B pencils, sorry, my brain is crashing. Um, they're, a, they're a lot darker or, or, uh, bolder, uh, but at the cost of the, of, um, the graphite stability. So more graphite is coming off the pencil as you're moving it. Um, so that's kind of the trade-off. So they're not sharp as long and they, they don't damage your paper as much, but more black falls onto the paper and that can you know lead to, to smudging and stuff so you know there's always trade-offs but b's and 2b's tend to be like my default early on um it used to be 2b's but i'm starting to like the b a bit more so yeah so let's start, let's start adding the details so first i'm gonna start with the crown there and add a bit more detail to the beak Now, the, the, the one lesson I learned is uh, I, I always tried to capture exactly what I've seen and not let myself experiment and have fun with it. Now, this is not a bad idea to have, but it can definitely lead to you c kind of criticizing your artwork and not thinking you're as good or just kind of not feeling great about yourself. So I like to use the term draw what you perceive. So this is just kind of a uh, you know take some uh, liberties if you have ideas or if, it, if if you do make a mistake as Bob Ross likes to say there are no such thing as mistakes just happy accidents. So if you do end up making a mistake sometimes it's good to just kind of flow with it and just see what what that also creates as well. Um, so, like for example, in my B drill over here, I accidentally made its uh, its antennas a little thick, but I actually just just stuck with it because because I kind of liked it. And um, like you could get some like really nice uh, outcomes with these mistakes. And sometimes your pencil doesn't always want to like go where where you're moving it. Based on just how, you know, how well, like how flexible your wrists or your arms are. So sometimes, like, if your body is trying to go in, in, in a certain direction, just let it, right? And sometimes it leads to a more natural looking image. Now what? So, like, I used to always also try to get, like, every little detail. So, like, every little feather. And though, you know, the, the, this can be nice. It can also lead to just you feeling frustrated if you don't get it perfect. Especially if early on it looked really good and then it gets messy. So, so I just kind of go for, like, the, the general idea. Kind of feeding into like what I mentioned earlier. You know. So, like, you know, as you can see, it's not exactly what, oh, sorry, it's not exactly what it looks like on the picture, but I actually like how this looks. It has a nice bit of detail. Now, I'm going to close my window a bit more, just so outside noise doesn't interfere. Yeah, so that looks pretty good, and then we'll connect it to the wing. That's kind of flapping down. So we'll add like the stripe here for the color. I'll also add a little bit of a ruffle up here for color. And also I'll just add a bit more detail to the eye since I'm at this. 
Now, I tend to not have an exact pattern on, as to how I draw. So I'm not always like, you know, stick with the head and then move on. I kind of go with like what would be the best starting point. And then because of my ADHD brain, I kind of just jump to whatever I'm feeling is the right thing to do at that point in time. You know. So, yeah, so we'll bring this up. And, like, as you can tell, I'm not being perfectly, like, accurate with my early attempts here. You know, like, I'm just, as I said, trying to get the rough shape. And it also kind of just adds good movement, you know. So bring this down and then bring this up like so. And, you know, I'm actually going to make the talon here a little thicker. That way I don't accidentally mess it up by going down and kind of like darkening the wing down here. I also try to avoid using very technical terms. Um, this is to make sure my left side of my brain, uh, your more an anical, your analytical side, your, you know, your heavy thinking brain to kick in and start calling the shots because that brain is an idiot when it comes to drawing. Your right side of your brain is what controls all of your creative aspects. So, I try to just shut off that side of the brain and trigger my, my right side. Because it knows what it's doing. Unfortunately, it drastically hampers my ability for speech. But that's okay, I don't need to talk very well. I just need to get the point across. There we go. Now add a little bit of fluff underneath the wings. There we go. That's not too bad. Uh, and I'll add some like motion lines, kind of like cutting through. Now I'll move this up, kind of goes through the foot here a little bit, but with how I I, I, I did the angle, it's not going to be exact to the picture, but once again, that's okay. I think as you can see, this is slowly taking shape and looking pretty dang good if I do say so myself. So let's add its its booty. And then I'll add its tail feathers. There. Uh and we'll also add a bit of weight to this talon before I forget. So it goes in this direction, swoops around, goes down, and then we'll add. We probably don't need to add the rest of it because of the wind. So, I'll continue adding the details of the wind.
and add a bit more scratch to this to give it that that movement vibe there oh and where i forget okay that's looking pretty pretty dang good looking to see if i miss any details you can add some like movement lines here and if I wanted to, let's uh, let's actually make this a little a little more fr frazzled, you know, to add to to that movement. Um, and we'll add a couple frazzle lines up here, and there. So this all took about seventeen minutes, and mine is the time, you know, the moment where I stop, I stop, I stop the talk. Probably closer to like 15, maybe 14 minutes just to do this, you know. And that's not bad. I don't even really need to add much detail if I really wanted to. But let's get to to the shading aspect as well. So, overview. This, this is how it looks now compared to the image here. So, like, not, you know, not, not too far off. Okay. Now, let's put the... Be aside, I'm gonna grab a quick swallow of water because my throat is quite parched. Okay. Um let's see, how how dark do I want to go? I think 4B. 4B tends to be like a pretty good middle road. Um should I have this a little sharper? Probably a little. So let's take a couple seconds. I can clean this up later. Just to give it a little bit of a sharpen. There. That should do. Nice and sharp. Let do have a tissue on me, just to kind of move this graphite out of the way so I don't get it everywhere. And I got it everywhere. Excellent. All right. So, should I remove some of the lines with the eraser? Probably. Oh, jeez. I am a mess. Okay. So, let's just clean up a little bit. No, we don't need that line. These lines up here are just kind of in the way. Now, you know, that one I could actually use for movement. So let's actually keep that one. Remove, remove some of these. You know, clean it up. And yeah, I think that's good. Oh, and clear. Ah, sorry. Clear off the beak. And okay. Now let's start adding a bit more detail and darkening lines and just making things look a little nice. Oh, and let's clean up its crown a little bit. And while I'm at it, just kind of tidy up the wings. Now, the reason why I use a tissue there is because if I use my hands, your f fingers, your, your skin is naturally oily, and, and that can cause smudging. And if you blow on your paper, the, uh, the your moist... The uh, breath can actually also add like a bit of like moisture to your paper, causing your your graphites and stuff to act a little differently. Now, I would like to get like some sort of broom for this, but for now, this works. So let's start darkening the lines. Now, something I'm trying to get out. Of the out of the habit of is trying to correct my lines as I'm doing the hard layer because I used to always dealt my lines early on I still tend to try to overcorrect 
and I'm trying to get out of that habit, but sometimes, you know, old, old habits die hard, and that is definitely the case when you draw. Let me just kind of darken this a little bit. There. Um, we'll kind of just connect that. Um, I can probably add a little bit of detail here. So, some detail there. And light detailing here. Okay, and we can do a light detail on its breast. So, there are also a bunch of different ways to shade. And, you know, try to find what what works for you. And different methods have different kind of effects. Um, I tend to do a lot of, like, lines. Now, I'm not always trying to be perfect with my lines. I, I'm mostly just trying to get, like, movement on paper, you know? So... Do that. Okay. Okay. Dark on the inside a little bit. Now, as you can see, I did the uh, overcorrection thing there, but you know what? That's okay. That's what these are for. These are for practice and not to beat yourself up over. Add that in. Add, oh, I should probably add the, the shading up here. Let's see. What would be good for the wings? Probably like kind of angled line and then not same idea but not as thick along the wings and also do something similar with the wing underneath maybe a little bit darker up here to add like so some shading and then lightly add detail underneath the wings here okay now for here this upper half is a little bit darker than the bottom half Okay. And sometimes my hands can be a little shaky. Kind of the downside of having arthritis and carpal tunnel. It can be a little hard to get get the lines I want. But what can you do, you know? Okay. Now let's add a bit more detail to these wings. Darken them a little bit.
add the speed lines. Now let's add the shading here. Darker along the lower half of the brim of the wing, and then lighter up this part. Okay, a little bit of extra shading there. Okay, add a bit more detail to the talons. Now my pencil is starting to get a little dull. That's okay, we can work with it. A bit more detail to the tail feathers. There. Uh, let's see. I can darken this spot. And let's add a bit more detail to the wind. And the wind I'm not do doing like a lot of detail for, you know? I I'm just trying to get the idea of it down. And we'll add some more detail to the tail feathers here. Double shading. And I'm actually gonna add like some like rings to the talons a little bit. Just to give them that little bit of extra like depth. Okay, now we are running out of time for my, 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 my 30 minute timer, but I think I can actually get the rest of the details off in time. So let me grab my, my shading stick. Now these aren't always necessary, but I find because like if you're trying to get like a smoother look, these work pretty well and you want to kind of Do the same technique that you use for for the shading for these uh, shading sticks. And because Pidgey's feathers don't look like they're like rough in any way, he's a little like you know. They're in motion right now, but they're not, like, rough or, like, like, uh, scaly or anything, you know? They're still feathers. The feathers are typically quite soft. Now what I do with the extra little bit of stuff on the shading stick is also use it to kind of add details to maybe smoother areas of the object that doesn't have you know, or, or need a lot of detail, you know?
let's actually move that up a little bit. Actually try to work with that to add a bit more movement. This is just something I'm trying for this. Um, okay. Bring the feet a little bit. As you can tell, I'm kind of using a, a slimmer technique to the ring for this. Those are in the, the talons. I uh, use a little bit of the extra graphite to kind of add a little bit of color to the talons, not a lot. Do the same for the eye here. And his crown, a little lighter on that side and this side. And yeah, so there we kind of go. We got kind of the idea, the shape. Now that went like a, like about two minutes over what I planned, but that's okay. Now if I want to, let's add some few more lines. So like, actually, I'm going to use the two H again. Add the movement lines here and there. Actually, don't I don't really relate to two H for that. I, th I thought I would, ended up not, and that's okay. Add some more lines over here. Add, add to the movement. And uh, yeah, there we go. So let's uh, let's label it. What what number is Pidgey? Perfect. Number sixteen. Number sixteen. Um, his name is Pidgey. Sign it. And date it. I think today is the 27th. May 27th. 2022. And I don't know. Say this. Say about, about 32 minutes. Minutes. And we'll put a little R here. To indicate that I recorded this. So yeah. There we go. So this is what I've gotten down. And this is what the the original looked like. So, like, all in all, not too bad. Anyway, I hope you guys like this. Um, and let me know if you want to see more of the stuff in the future. This is just an experiment I want to do. I'm not even sure if I can post this on, on Instagram. Maybe I can post it in bits or do a time lapse. I'm not, I'm not fully sure. Um, but if not, I will link this uh to my youtube channel i guess or something like that i don't know i'll i'll figure something out anyways hope you guys like this and i'll see y'all later bye